There are some things in life we cannot change. It's the city we are born, the date on which we are born, we can't change it now. If we can't change our parents, but one more thing we can't change is when we have selected our PhD topic and we have started working on it. Going back and changing it seems like foolishness. So it's very important to know what topic you should choose for your PhD. Of course, you cannot go and change your birth date, but definitely you have a choice. The choice to choose the right PhD topic. Because if you choose the wrong PhD topic, tomorrow you will suffer and you will just get stuck into the academia. You'll never reach the industry, right? So in today's video, we are going to discuss some key pointers which will help you decide whether a particular PhD topic is right for you or not. Now, in the meanwhile, while I'm going to tell you all these pointers. You will have some questions or maybe you want to ask whether this particular PhD topic is right for you or not. You can reply below in the comment section and I'll try to reply to you back with the answer to that. Okay, so that's the deal. I'll try my best to reply given my busy schedule. But definitely if I cannot reply, I'll make a video on that. Right. In fact, today's video is also because one of my students, Dharini, has, who has qualified CSINET and she wants to choose her PhD topic, asked me this question. So to start with, the first and foremost question is, what's your passion? Precaution number one, if you choose something which is not your passion, then you will die of boredom. You will die of uh, monotony and you will never enjoy your PhD journey. It's very important to enjoy your PhD journey. So choose a topic which aligns with your passion. Okay, so that's the first precaution I want to give you. Now, the second one which I have for you is feasibility and scope. Now, one important thing is like you, you target a moonshot, like growing plants in space, but now you don't have infrastructure to create a space-like environment, right? So feasibility is very important. So if you are choosing a topic for which you have to do a lot of running to back and forth to get the reagents, to, to get the chemicals, to get the infrastructure, then probably you are going to waste a lot of time doing that. But that's not your battle. So you should know what's your battle. And that is why do a feasibility check, thorough feasibility check and whether this project can be done or not. And if yes, then what I will need? If no, then why I can't do it? So all of that, you have to create kind of a SWOT analysis. Okay. Now the third one will be originality. Okay. So see, many people do small changes in the existing topics. Like they do just to 2% change or 10% change. And now it's a new PhD topic and you do it. Your guide will be happy. You'll be in the comfort zone. But you know, nothing grows in the comfort zone. You can never get into industry if you just keep doing a small changes into previous PhD topic and do it. As your own PhD, it's not going to work. Instead, look for something original, look for something challenging, and look for something which is commercializable. That's my next point. So commercializable. Why? Because if your PhD topic cannot be commercialized or cannot be contributed towards any company, then it's of no use. Why? Because 99% of academic research papers are unusable. Why? Because they do not consider this fact that one day your PhD should actually culminate into a company or into a contribution to a company, right? So that's very, very important. So originality, relevance and commercialization is very important. The next point will be supervisor's expertise. Now, again, like I told you, you cannot decide which city you were born. You cannot decide which date you were born. Definitely, you can decide which place you will work, right? The same way you can get limited. See, the, the country we were born and it is a poor country. Definitely, you cannot grow. So, if you want to grow in your research career, you have to have the right project guide. You have to have the right supervisor. If the supervisor himself is not showing interest or he is very busy with other students or other work or he is busy with his own project or he is not having the expertise which you want, then you are headed towards a dead end. So, analyze your supervisor's expertise also. For you, it's your PhD topic. For them, it's a extra job. So they may not be interested. So look for those people who are passionate about guiding their PhD student. That's very, very important. Now, followed by that, of course, uh, you should also keep in mind the funding availability. Now, many of the students jump into PhD without having the right funding. Remember, PhD is just like job because you are in the job earning um, you know, category. If you had not gone for the PhD, probably you would have gone for a job and you could have been earning, right? So the same way, if you don't have the fellowship, I will suggest don't do your PhD. Even if you are doing your PhD without fellowship, always make sure that there is some kind of funding resource. It could be personal, it could be your parents, it could be someone from the uh, industry who is funding your PhD so that you do not get stuck when the PhD demands it and you are not able to self-fund it or it really becomes painful. So you have to keep that in mind. Now, the next one which I have for you is employment opportunity. Now, remember what I told you at the beginning, the PhD should be commercializable. 
the same way if the phd is non commercializing then you will not get the right opportunity employment opportunity so if you're not getting the employment opportunity what will you do after phd you will do a postdoc after postdoc you'll be stuck in the postdoc cycle you just keep doing research forever in academia you will never get into that industry so do a phd which is directly or indirectly connected to some kind of commercializable product or service in the future okay next one which i have for you is ethical consideration now keep this in mind that many a times your phd topic is something for example gene editing in crispr and you did something and leads leads to a lot of buzz but in the negative sense and that leads to your license getting cancelled you are debarred from doing your phd and all that stuff you know this happened to somebody in china right so keep that in mind and last point uh, i think uh, not last second last point will be scalability and adaptability you will have to adapt to the current situation you have to adapt to the funding resources the phd rights limitation you will have to make sure that the technology which you are trying to build or the technology which you are working on is scalable and consider your phd is just like a startup right you have to make sure that you are progressing in the right direction now the last point will be always remember this fact that always phd is time taking process it leads to a situation where it will cost a lot of your personal time so work life balance also should be maintained don't choose something which requires a lot of your time and then you will be left out with like okay you moved mountains and then you did firefighting and then you have no personal time for your family i don't think that's the right choice do your phd but with the right work life balance that is also very important okay so i think i gave you around nine pointers now the 10th one i think should be something which uh, should stem out of one experience i had with one of the phd student he was doing phd in a ccmb hyderabad or something cdfd and he came to me and he said that i left my phd midway i was like why and he said i worked for 3 years and i finally when started writing the thesis i realized that the basis of my data itself was wrong so remember this fact the samples which you are collecting the data which you are collecting all of that has to have the right scientific principles should be followed and your guide should be looking into it almost every weeks so then so that you don't go in the wrong direction that guy wasted 3 years of his life and then he was fully depressed because he could not finish his phd and that's a lesson i would like to share today So that's all about uh, what you should be keeping in mind when you are selecting your PhD topic. However, like I said, you might have some specific questions. Feel free to comment below, and I'll be sure to reply to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Take care. Keep shining. Bye bye.